where you are to get to where God wants you to be. I'm so happy that you asked that question. You see, because in order to move from one stage to the next, we have got to embrace the fact that not only do we have to deal with our public and private pains, but we must understand that life operates in season. We must understand that the seasons where we live, where operate in season we must understand that there are some seasons in life where things are going well and everything is fine and your bills are paid and you got a job going on and your food is in your house and your kids are acting like they're from planet earth and not like baby kids but some days there are seasons when things are so chaotic and you feel like you are magnetically attracted to chaos and confusion but my brothers and sisters it doesn't matter matter what you're doing, do not allow your issues to cause you not to go after what it is that God has called you to be. Because in our seasons, we must learn how to trust God in every one of our seasons. If the days are good and shining and I'm floating on calms and blessed seas, I will bless the Lord at all times for his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. And when I find myself in the valley of despair, catching in hell and high water I still will bless the Lord at all times for his praise shall continuously be in my mouth we have got to learn to stay with God regardless of our seasons if you humor me tonight I will walk you through some season that I believe the Apostle Paul and some others can in the Bible can examples and show us all right the first season is the season of truth this season of truth is not a well-like season because in the season of truth, we have been lying and acting like everything is okay. You see, the season of truth, we have to come face to face with our issues. No one is going to get healed until you know that you need a doctor. No one is going to get healed. The band-aids need to be pulled off. Why put band-aids on things that you need surgery for? In the season of truth, you must come to face to face with who you are and what is going on in your life. We don't like to act like this, especially in the sanctuary, because in the sanctuary, we need to put on our sanctified, put together face. We need to act like everything is okay. Sometimes you want to cry and you're fighting the tears back, but my question to you is, why don't you just go ahead and cry? Because if you can't hide from God, who are you hiding from? Amen. Amen. In the first place, you can't hide from God. So just go ahead and just cry the tears out. It's, tears is a language that gods understand. Amen. We must deal with the season of truth. And the, the truth is never pretty. In the season of truth, we must come face to face. Come to grip with the issues of our lives that we incurred. One of the biggest issues we have to deal with is not the one that we inflict on ourselves, but the one that was inflicted inflicted upon us especially by someone that you love and trust when our enemies come at us we are under no illusion and no pretense we know why they came and so we get ourselves together and we put our fighting stance on and we told the devil come if you want to try it if you want to I got something for you but when we are around our friends and family especially our church family we put our guards down because we tend to think that they have a our best interest at heart but experience 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 is a greatest teacher have taught me that no one can hurt you like the people who love you and draw you close we must go through the season of truth and the good news is if you graduate this season God will move you to another season and this season is called trust the season of trust is also a funny season because in the season of trust, it's not how much can God trust you. It's not how much you can trust God, but how much can God trust you. 
child of God with your issues. Can I trust you to still go after what I called you to be even if you have to drag your way there? Child of God with your issues. Can I trust you to worship me and not blame people for your injuries? Child of God with your issues. Can I trust you to keep on going even if you have to cry the whole way through? There are questions in this season. Child of God, can I trust you not to get bitter in your circumstances? Walk with me for a moment. You see, when we get hurt, human nature is to lash out at the person that hurt us. And if we can't find them, we went looking for something or someone that would resemble the very one that hurt us. But my brothers and sisters, tonight I'm here to tell you, lashing out at them is not hurting them. It is killing you. So don't lash out at anyone that tries to do anything to you. Sometimes we cannot deal or come to grip with the root and foundation of our issues. Sometimes God uses the most unexpected sources to bless us. How many doors have you and opportunities have we thrown away because we don't like the package it came in? How many blessings have we thrown away because we didn't like the way it showed up on our doorstep? Can I trust you, child of God, not to die in your season, not to quit, and not to give up? You see, if we don't lash out at the person that hurt us, we go to the other end of the spectrum. We quit. We throw in the towers. We check out on life. We quit and we give up because it didn't go the way that we expected it to go. God has a time that doesn't work on our time. God has a plan that doesn't work on our plans. And he has a will that cannot be changed and denied. But you have to stay eligible by refusing to quit. By refusing to throw in the towel. By refusing to deny that the very thing that God is calling you to do. If anyone have a reason to quit, it's the Apostle Paul. Do I have a witness in the house tonight? We go from season of truth to season of trust. And if you graduate these two seasons, God have another season waiting for us. It's the season of transfer. Somebody say transfer. In the season of truth, you see, we have to come gripped face to face with our issues. And the season of trust, we got to trust God no matter what situation or pain we may find ourselves in. But when we come to the season of transfer, this is where God pays you back for all of the things that you've been through. Somebody say transfer. I love the season of transfer. This is the place when all of our issues, our shortcomings, and our mishap finally begins to make sense. You see, we didn't understand it in the season of truth, and we couldn't see it in the season of trust. But right here in this season, God is about to show us exactly what it is, that why he did exactly what he did. There was a purpose and a plan that we couldn't see or we couldn't understand just because you got some issues doesn't mean God is done with you yet. To the young lady that I mentioned in the beginning that was born in the 1940s in the place called St. Bethlehem, Tennessee. She had dreams and aspiration of being a world-class athlete just like her sisters. But because of in 1944, she contracted polio at the very young age. She didn't think that she can do what it is that she wanted to do. But somewhere and somehow, she became a winner on, and she pushed past her pain and became the winner that we all know today and her name is Wilma Rudolph and in 1960 she became the first American woman to win three gold medals in one Olympic all I'm trying to tell you my brothers and sisters it doesn't matter what issues you have do not allow your issues to hinder you from getting in what God has called you to do she has she was determined and doing her last qualifying heat she sprained her ankle and they thought that she was not going to make it. But I can hear her mind. She said, if I can beat the odds of polio, if I can beat pneumonia, if I can beat scarlet fever, I can push past my pain and I can run to the finish line and get that next goal. And that's exactly what she did. She pushed past her pain and she ran to the finish line and she got that gold medal that day. So just because you got some issues doesn't mean 
mean that you can't be what God calls you to be. Thankfully, in scriptures, there are several instances of people who push past their own thorns, their own issues, and became all that God called them to be. And I'm going to talk to Brother Moses right now. You see, Moses was the one that God found on the backside of a desert, the one that had the burning bush experience. God found him and told him, I want you to go down to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses said, but God, you don't know who you are talking to and you don't know my issues. You see God, I stammer from time to time and I have a stuttering tongue. God said to Moses, but Moses, I knew who you are before I even came down to see you. And no matter what you have, it does not exempt you from what I am calling you to do. So the, Moses with all of his issues led the Israelites out of Egypt captivity and he led them down to the base of Canaan land just because you got some issues doesn't mean that God can't call you to be what he called you to be I ran on a little bit further and I came across Job everybody know who Job is Job had it all together including his integrity he was upright and he had a right relationship with God but the enemy reached down and tested Job with some issues Job was in good health but the Bible tell me that his health failed him. He was a wealthy man, but he became poor. He was a father and he became fatherless. He was a good husband, but who knows that his wife would have turned on him. Job had some friends, but once his private pain became public, they blamed him for his condition. Eventually, Job, the man who had everything, lost it all. But you see, no matter what you do, amen, no matter what you go through, don't lose your relationship and your integrity with God, but rather hold on to God's unchanging hand. Job looked to God, he prayed to God, and for a time, God did not answer. But the Bible said that Job never cursed God. He never lost his integrity. In fact, his response was, naked came I of oh, my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We now travel a little further and we found brother Peter. We know that Peter got some issues too. Peter was a work in progress. At time he was brash, at time he was fearless, and at time he was a coward. Peter was all of that. You see, he angrily cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest in the garden when, G, when they came to arrest Jesus. You see, he, had, he was boasting that he would never forsake Jesus, but just a little while later, he denied him three times. But grace was not finished with him yet. On the day of Pentecost, he was a recycled Peter. He preached the first sermon and thousands of souls were saved. Amen. And then when I went on a little further into the New Testament, I found a guy by the name of Paul. We know who Paul is. Paul is the one that God found on Damascus Road and knocked him off of his horse and converted him to Christianity. But Paul testified that he too have his own issues. He said, when I want to do good, evil is always present. He said, there is a thorn in my flesh and I prayed to God three times. But every time I prayed, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. And this is St. Peter is the one that wrote 13 books of the New Testament. Peter, Paul, excuse me, is the one that wrote 13 books of the New Testament. And he is the very one that taught us Christian theology for today. But so just because you and I got some issues does not mean that we cannot be who God called us to be. Be mindful tonight that whatever your issues are, God can use it for his glory. With his grace, you and I can make it. The Bible said that we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Paul said in the same book, in the fourth chapter, we have this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of the power of God may rest upon us. I hear him said that we are troubled on every side, but not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. 
God will take care of you and me despite of our pain for his grace will sustain us. We can live by another standard because of his sustaining grace. We can march to a different drum beat because of his sustaining grace. We can look at things through a different lens and think with a different mindset all because of God's sustaining grace. My grace is sufficient for you. And when I read that, it brings joy to my soul. Because he's, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. He didn't say it was sufficient for Paul. He said it was sufficient for you. And for that you could be the you and the me in that text. God grace is sufficient for you and it's sufficient for me. This sustaining grace is available to all of us, but we have to reach out for it. God's purpose in all of this is for our ultimate good and his ultimate glory. Paul said it best in Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. And to them who are called according to his purpose. You see, God uses our limitations, our issues, and to remind us that whatever is hurtful can help us to become more mature and dependent upon him. And it teaches us that our burdens can become our blessings. Come back, singers. The grace of God has done for you and for me some things that we couldn't have had done for ourselves. Can anybody just be honest tonight with yourself and say that as you scan the, 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 the canvas of your life, Life, that you can look at some issues and some situation and you can say God did that God fixed that God took care of that can anyone be honest tonight but just in case that no one can be honest with yourself and just maybe if you don't have any issues I have my own and when I look back over my life and see where the Lord has brought me from I thank God for his sustaining grace I thank him for his mercy and I thank him because you see the Lord snatched me out of some things. The Lord prevented some things. The Lord blocked some things. The Lord closed some doors and he opened up some doors. Had the Lord not done that for me, I don't know where I would have been today. Had he not prevented some things in my life, I promise you that I would have probably been in jail for the rest of my life or I'd probably been dead six feet under. But I thank God for his amazing grace. I thank him because you see because of his grace I'm not locked up in a room rocking back and forth not knowing who I am. I could have been dead sleeping in my grave but I thank God. Somebody ought to say they thank God. I thank God for his amazing grace. I thank him for his sustaining grace. You said through hardship his grace sustained me. Through headaches his grace sustained me through heartaches. His grace sustained me through difficulties. His grace sustained me when the battle is severe. His grace sustained me when the burden was too great. His grace sustained me when the billows of life was raging. His grace sustained when the midnight was murky and I couldn't see my way. His grace sustained when the moments was threatening. His grace sustained when death was looming his grace sustain and saints if we have nothing to think about let us think about 2000 when death was sweeping across the land but God kept us 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 his grace his grace his grace his grace kept us his amazing grace kept us I am not here and you are not here because we are good. We are here simply because of the grace of God. Saints, whatever we do, know that the grace of God, it covers us. Know that the grace of God, it protects us. And know that the grace of God keeps us. Andrew Krause sing a song that touches me every time I hear it. And minister, if I could sing tonight, I would have truly sing this song. But the song said, how can I give thanks for all that you have done? Things 
so undeserving yet you prove your love to me the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that I am and ever hope to be I owe it all to you so to God be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory for the great things he has done saints no matter what circumstances you find yourself in know that the grace of God will keep you the grace of God will keep me and the grace of God will keep us may God reach you bless you Oh, glory to God. Father, we thank you for your love and your touch on your daughter. Covering your blood and strength her inside out. Continue to use her for your glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on. Come on and put your hands together. Come on and give God the praise. Hallelujah.